for? I was replacing a TV. Let's say 201. Remember that ICOM M12 VHF Marine Transceiver I got from a recent ham fest for a dollar? Well, I've been able to get it to do more things. First of all, I was able to hook up a power supply. It's a bit crude, but I'm just using modern batteries that weren't available back then. Two 18650s at 3.7 volts each. That gives a total of 7.4 volts, which is fine to power this transceiver, at least on receive and that's the only thing I'm using this radio for. Next thing was to get it to receive frequencies other than certain VHF marine channels, around 156 megahertz. For that, I've built this super simple converter. Only a few components, but when I use it in conjunction with this RF oscillator, actually a dip oscillator, which you might already have, then I can tune various interesting frequencies in the VHF segment. This is a diode mixer. Incoming signals come through here. There's a tuned circuit comprising seven turns of wire, just air round on a five millimeter or similar drill bit. It's paired with this beehive trimmer capacitor to provide a selective tuned circuit. You resonate that at whatever frequency you want to receive. It might be 144 megahertz for the amateur two meter band, or a little bit higher, around 160 megahertz for utility signals you may be able to receive. You can see there's two connections, one via a 30 picofarad capacitor there. Its value is not critical. That goes to the receiver, so you've got 150, 758 megahertz out there. Here you've got an input, and this is a HF input. It's around 5 to 15 megahertz, and that is what this local oscillator here is for. This one happens to be a grid or gate dip oscillator. It's just a... RF oscillator, it's actually used for testing tuned circuits, and this is what we used before modern antenna analyzers. Anyway, these types of units often had plug-in coils. It's actually described on my website. These plug-in coils give you various bands. This one does 7 to 15 megahertz, which is about what we need, although I do have another coil in here uh, that does... 2.6 to 7.4 and I found that useful as well. I don't have a direct connection between this dip oscillator and the converter here. I don't need it. The dip oscillator is battery powered. I'll just show you inside it. There are 9 volt battery and not very many parts but it comprises uh, basically a fit oscillator and the meter there when you hold it up to another tuned circuit if it's resonant on the same frequency that you've got your variable capacitor here and your coil is resonant the meter scale goes right down to zero well you can use it for all sorts of things like finding inductance and capacitance or in this case as a signal generator so what i'm doing is that i'm tapping off a little bit of the uh, signal at hf around 10 megahertz or so uh, into this coil, coupling coil, which feeds it into the diode mixer. And when you've got that mixed with the incoming signal, you've got a different frequency, which is what is picked up by this ICOM receiver here. And so as a result, given that this is receiving uh, VHF marine band, we're using this as the intermediate frequency, at 156, 157 megahertz. All we need is around 10 megahertz from, uh, coming from here, and that will allow you to receive signals on the two meter amateur band, around 144 to 148 megahertz. If you want to change the 
signal that you're receiving, then you just vary the local oscillator here. And as it's only around 10 megahertz, it's reasonably stable and it, and it, and it will receive FM signals quite well. Uh, it will be quite stable. Um, if this local oscillator was running at VHF free running, then there might be problems. But down at 5, 10, 15 megahertz, it's stable enough for FM transmissions. As you will hear in a moment. There are a few shortcuts. It doesn't have an RF preamp. It doesn't have a lot of front end selectivity. There will be cases where you hear harmonics of this in this receiver at 157 megahertz. So you will find cases where you'll hear dead spots when you tune around the squelch or mute. You just tune off to a side. And if that coincides with a desired signal, then luckily with this you have different channels so you can just move to another channel readjust this slightly and you should be okay let's have a look at the circuit this gives you a little bit more guidance i think than just looking at at my messy board uh, you've got the antenna here seven turns on the coil you might want to optimize these tapping points but i've got you know tapped two turns from the bottom for the antenna diode is another turn tapped there and here's the dip oscillator, which is the local oscillator that provides a bit of signal of around 10 megahertz coupled into this mixer. This wire here is the black wire. I'll just show you there. It's just a, a loop there. Its length is probably not very critical. You just want it to pick off a bit of RF from this coil. I tried having two turns around it, but I found that one turn was enough. Now, it picked off enough RF to provide sufficient injection. As this is just using a diode, it's a very low level type of mixer. So you don't need very much oscillator power to allow this mixer to work. So that's the circuit, super simple. Really the only critical or difficult to get part is this beehive trimmer. The rest should be fairly common. Or maybe the germanium dive that might be uh, hard to get in some cases. If you want to go really modern, you might be able to use a DDS or direct digital synthesizer and just couple it into this part of the circuit. But I think in this case, there's a lot to be said for having a free running oscillator that you can very easily tune and sweep very very easily you don't have to worry about channels or anything like that you just tune around just like a casual shortwave radio and with any luck you'll hear signals like it could be two meter amateur signals it could be utility depending on where you are just as a test if you've got a two meter vhf amateur handheld then you can put it on a frequency tune across with the dip oscillator and hopefully find yourself and hear your own FM signal. If there's a local FM repeater that's active, then you might be able to tune that in, but note that repeaters are only transmitting when there's someone in conversation on them. Most of the time they sit idle, so you need to be a bit lucky when there's a conversation on the repeater, then you connect it up to your antenna and hopefully you'll hear a signal if you tune around with a dip oscillator as well as peaking the front end until you hear the signal is strongest as well as amateur activity on 144 to 148 uh, this will only pick up analog fm by the way because this is an fm only receiver narrowband fm but depending on where you are there may be other utility communication that is still using analog fm and I'll give you a demonstration of some of the things I've been able to hear in a moment. Thank you. 
lost an arm. <laughs> anyway, I've got to go clear. My dinner is just about ready. I've just got to go, go back up. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. I don't know what's happened to Paul. Um, he sounds like he can't hear me, mate. Hope you're doing well, mate. What's for dinner? Uh, well, I had a palmer and veggies. Up here, this is around 161 to 164 megahertz. So, just adjusted it out a little bit lower capacitance so we'll see if we can get signals other than amateurs So this is our super simple converter. It's probably not the most sensitive because there is no gain in the mixer. Yet if you want to receive local VHF FM amateur activity and 
some other communications that might be in your area and all you have is a junk box super cheap marine band transceiver like this then that can be a very good IF and as it's such a good IF it's a really good quality piece of equipment you can take some shortcuts like with super simple converters like this and hear at least some signals. Enjoy these videos? Want to start in amateur radio? Well, check out my books, Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.